Well, we'll take a break from the national protest and talk money, talk uh, some of the fortunes. And right now, we're looking at the fact that Fidelity Bank has extended public share offer period, uh, public offer period. And we are going to be joined, or we have been joined by the ED, Chief Operations and Information Officer, Fidelity Bank PLC, who is in the person of Mr. Stanley Amuche. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Amuche. Thank you. Good morning, and thank you for having me. Yes, in the short time that we have, let us just know about uh, this offer that you have uh, uh, put forward. How is it going so far? What's the response like, and is it meeting your expectations? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, the offer is going well. The um, subscription is very good and strong. Uh, we've seen that people um, are subscribing and um, that shows that they, they appreciate the, the level of work that the bank is doing. And uh, that's what we've seen, you know, um, in the last uh, few days that the offer has been running. So what date has it been extended to? And what is the rationale behind uh, uh, doing that at this moment? Okay, good. So um, the offer started on the 20th of June, and it was supposed to close on the 29th of July. That's 28 days. Um, but it's been extended to 12th of August, additional 10 business uh, days. Uh, and the rationale is because uh, when we started off, we realized that some investors wanted, um, thought that the money could be returned to them because they felt that the offer size was not big enough. Of course, we started this before the CBN announced the recapitalization in the industry. So that was our own internal um, estimate of what we needed for, for our business at, at, the, at the time. So uh, what we've done is to go back to the shareholders to get um, additional shares in offer so that if there's over subscription, we can take that. So what we're seeing now is a situation where some of the people who subscribed before are coming back to top of uh, their initial subscription because it, they couldn't maximize their, uh, their plan or get enough or, or subscribe for enough because they were scared that monies could be returned to them. So the, the essence of the extension, one, is to give them that time to be able to optimize their, their appetite for the, our shares. And secondly, um, when the NGS uh, opened a virtual platform for subscription, uh, that came in 30 days into our offer. So most of the retail subscribers who want to use that platform didn't have up to the 28 days you know, to, to use that. So, I mean, with this extension, that gives enough time for those who want to subscribe through that platform okay. to still continue to do, to subscribe. Okay. So those are the reasons for the extension. And I think uh, most of the subscribers and the investors are finding it very interesting at the moment. Okay, you just mentioned the recapitalization. How is Fidelity Bank uh, like, uh, you know, when, when it comes to that? How, how far away from the target are you, or are you very close? What happens uh, next? Okay, good. So um, we are an international bank uh, with uh, foreign authorization. What it means is that in the classification, uh, we require 500 billion. Uh, that's the regulatory capital as defined by the regulator. Um, currently, we have one approximately 130 billion. So the difference to make it up is about 370. So this um, offer, uh, if successful, at least will take us. Uh, we are set to raise 127.1 billion, and then if if we take additional um, over subscription, uh, that could get us anywhere close to um, 200. Or 205 uh, billion, if you add it to what we have, that will take us to three. So, at the end of the day, for the second phase, uh, we'll have probably a difference of about 170 billion to make up to uh, 500. Okay, so what if at the end of the day you don't meet the target? What happens to Fidelity? No, we are very focused on meeting the targets. Um, we're, we're, we have our eyes set on it. We don't see anything that will stop us from meeting the target. Um, so everything is in the works from the support we've seen from investors on this our current offer. And we don't see anything that will stop us from meeting it. So we are very focused on that, actually. 
So we're also concerned about in international investors. What is, uh, what's your hope for them? Are they willing to invest in the bank? And what impact will your branch or the UK uh, London office uh, in investors' confidence, what, what, is, what is the role that is playing in all this? Yeah, okay. So when you talk about uh, international investors, we're not seeing a lot of that currently. Of course, it's... Uh, uh, the reason is not far fetched. Um, we have had situations where they are still on the waiting side, just waiting to know how the economy pans out. So we've seen a lot of activities from within the country and then from Nigerians in diaspora who are also trying to invest in Nigeria. You know, So maybe international investors will come in later on, but for now we have not seen a lot happening from their side. Yeah. So um, on our UK subsidiary, I mean, it's... Um, it's been a strategic move where the acquisition we did uh, last year, and we're seeing that our customers who have their businesses in other parts of the world, we're able to support them, either through their trade transactions, we're using our UK subsidiary currently. Uh, uh, currently. So it's, it's, it's a very interesting thing, and our customers are very appreciative of the fact that from Nigeria to other parts of the world, we can have a straight, straight through um, uh, support or service to them. So that's that's what's going on currently. So what's the present uh, shares composition? Uh, how much of it is uh, owned by principal shareholders and how much rights issues are they willing to take up from this offer? No, so basically, you know, all the shares today that uh, you will say they are all uh, held by uh, shareholders and it's quite diversified. So when we talk about our shareholding here, it's one of the most diversified shares that you hardly have an individual with more than 5%. So it's just diversified among a lot of investors, you know, um, and therefore uh, most of them are also ready to take up their, their rights. The initial plan was that for each, for 10 shares you have, you have a right of one share, you know, but with the extension and the possibility, so uh, people are also able to take it even more from the right issue. So, um, basically, I think there's interest. We're seeing a lot of people taking up their rights, and um, we believe that at the end of this offer, they would have been able to take up fully the rights that they have. Okay, so let's look at um, uh, what the CBN policy, uh, not the new policy, is now. Uh, reduce loan to deposit ration from 65% to 50%. They, they just did that recently, and uh, is your bank, the Fidelity Bank, willing to review the single obligator limit to 20% and how will that profit you? No, okay, so a single obligor is 20% um, of share, that's one is bid and it's a requirement. It's uh, a, a requirement by the regulator. So it's, uh, it's not about what we want to do, but that's what it is that we have to do. But the reduction of um, the loan to deposit to, um, from 65 to to 50, 50. Uh, it's clearly a, a response, the response that the CBA had, because currently if you take 100 million deposits, 45 million of it goes to CBA and Sierra. So if you've taken 45 to Sierra, that means 45% goes for uh, uh, Sierra. Therefore, what you have to do with this is 55. So saying you do 65 wouldn't make sense because you don't even have it. So, and what CBN did was to try and align that to the current situation or the current uh, Sierra regime, where 45% stays with the Sierra and Sierra. You only left with 55%, and therefore, what I said is that your loan to deposit should be 50. At least you have five for other things. So that is that is that is what it is, and that's what aligns to the current regime of uh, Sierra. Yeah there, yeah, there are a lot of people with, with fear, and understandably so. So anybody who wants to invest in, in your, your institution will want to stay informed. First of all, would like to know how much extension or expansion do you want to make, maybe expanding to other African countries and all that, and how can your customers or your investors stay informed? Okay, good. So, I mean, um, expansion is one of, if you look at the purpose for this offer, one of it is to expand both domestically and internationally. We've done one step uh, to UK last year. We believe there are other opportunities in other African countries and even other countries of the world. So uh, we're looking for where our customers are spread. We look for opportunities in other clients, and therefore we expand to increase custom, I mean, um, stakeholder uh, shareholder value 
So we'll continue to do that when we seek out opportunities in any environment where we believe we can do business and be able to uh, improve our performance for the benefit of our shareholders. We will continue to do that. Um, on the on the um, I think you asked another question. Uh, can you repeat the question? You, you, you are asking. About, are you, there's a question you asked. Please, can you? Repeat? I was talking about expansion. Do you want, intend to expand to other other countries as well? Yeah. So that's what I just said. That African countries, the opportunities in African countries, I will continue to expand. To, to and those then, countries. how can the investors stay in touch with you? Those are the two questions. Okay. So um, each at each quarter end, uh, we we do we prepare a lot of investor uh, presentations, which are shared to investors. But twice a year, that's after half year and a full year end, we we'll hold investor calls where people can, can, can log in to listen to us, present the facts behind the figures, how we are performed for the half year okay. or the full year. You know, so our investors can stay in touch. Uh, uh, we have investor relations team that can, any investor who wants to ask any question, just any question about our performance or All whatever right. is happening in the bank, All can reach out to our investor relations team. Aside okay. the timely uh, presentations we do to investors to let them know how the bank is doing All right. the performance of the bank. All right, thank you. We wish you well. We hope that uh, you'll instill so much confidence in your investors that they know that even in the economic meltdown, nothing do you. Thank you so much, Mr. Amuche, for coming on the show and sharing uh, the information with us. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, that was Mr. Stanley Amuche, uh, Executive Director, Chief Operations and Information Officer, Fidelity Bank, PLC, talking with us. And that's how we draw the curtain on today's um, uh, show. Be peaceful wherever you are. Uh, remember that whatever you're doing, uh, you have to, first of all, think about patriotism. Think about your country, Nigeria. And as you go out today, may God go with you. Uh, my name is Nyamgul Agaji. Thanks for being there.